What do you like best about funny cars? They're fast. Fast? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like, the, I like the power they get up off the line with. I like the smoke and everything, man. That's the excitement. Noise. The noise. Speed. Jet engines. Horsepower. I like the smell of a funny car. The nitro cubes, huh? Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Bobby Doerr from Main Event Video. We're here at Raceway Park in English Town, New Jersey for the Kmart Polaroid US All Pro Funny Car Championships. This is the 10th year this event's been held and right behind me right now is over $5 million worth of racing equipment. Over 100,000 horsepower. All the funny cars, all 32 of them, Jet, Nitro, and alcohol funny cars that are entered here today are lined up behind me here on the drag strip. And in just a few minutes, we're going to start them up California style. That means that all 32 funny cars are going to start their engines at the same time. The crowd here at the Kmart Polaroid US All Pro Funny Car Championships really enjoys it and we're sure you're going to like it too. for first round of Nitro Funny Car action here at the Kmart Polaroid US All Pro Funny Car Championships. The Nitro Funny Cars are lined up behind me in the build-up van. Behind me, fired and running the first pair on the, of cars on the starting line, ready to go. In the lane nearest to you, the left-hand lane out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Frank Hamburger in the Philadelphia Flyer Ford Mustang. He'll be taking on Al Hoffman, driving the Gemini Corvette. Watch for Hoffman in the right-hand lane to make a super burnout. He's really good at making these super smoky burnouts. He says he's going to win the burnout one. There's a burnout contest here today. An extra $1,000, which is a lot of money these funny car racers, goes to the Nitro Funny Car that does the best burnout. We'll be looking for that. Also, this is first round. The two low ETs in the first round, the two quickest cars, will come back and beat the final round. So the team of Cranberger and Philbo, here in the left-hand lane out of Philadelphia, with the Ford Mustang body car, they call the Philadelphia Flyer. Right-hand lane. Originally from Connecticut, now lives down in Florida. A brand new car for him. It's a Corvette body. He calls it Gemini. 3,000 horsepower, supercharged, fuel-injected, nitro-burning car.
This is going to be a good East versus West Coast battle. In the lane nearest to me, on the left-hand side, out of California, right outside of Los Angeles, it's the infamous Hawaiian Punch, Dodge of Roland Leon. Driven by his new driver, he's had about 10 of them in the car, Johnny West. His competition will be out of Lynn Willard, Pennsylvania. Another journeyman funny car driver from the East Coast. Dominic Santucci, they call him DA. He's got one of the prettiest cars on the circuit. It's the Black Magic Thunderbird. You can see they have the roof hatches open. That's to let all the nitro fumes that are inside the car and all the tire smoke outside the car get it out of the driver's compartment so the driver has a little bit clearer vision. The Hawaiian punch car in this lane is in the lane that was just oiled on. Brent Cranberger just blew his motor, so it might make a traction problem. It might make a little difference off the starting line. Santucci running in the right lane, runs here at Eggerstown about six times a year. Really knows this track well, and he's definitely going to be a hard man to beat. Remember, the two low ETs get into the final. The Hawaiian punch in the near lane, Dominic Santucci, the black magic Thunderbird in the right-hand lane. Closest drag race of the day. What a great pass. Dom Santucci, right lane, took the win of 584, 250 miles per hour. Johnny West driving boldly off to wind up and smoke right off the start line. Came back here and his tires were blazing. He runs a 589, 253 miles per hour. Okay, here's our next pair. This is going to be an interesting confrontation. Force versus sport. In the near lane, the Castro, TPX, Jolly Rancher, Polaroid Oakmobile of John Bruce Force out of your Belinda, California. Wow, what a burnout by Force! Unbelievable! The smoke, the fumes covering the starting line here at English Town. Force really lay down a super smoky. John Force has got a problem on the starting line. You can see he has shut it off. And a lot of smoke coming out of that car. A big upset. Nobody ever expected that Johnny Force would have to be shut off on the starting line. So, going down the track uncontested will be Paul Smith in the future for his car. smoke right off the starting line. Definitely had too much power dialed into that car, too much clutch.
great pass by Jerry Caminito up and smoke halfway down the track. Still sets set second low in two. 586, 256 miles per hour. That's also good for top speed. So right now, if these cars do better, the final is going to be the Black Magic of Tom Santucci against Jerry Caminito. Here comes our next pair. As you can see, smoke coming out of that car. He's going for it, but I think he's going to be okay. R.C. Sherman, really, really exploding engine down there at the big end. The crew going out to check him out. Okay, so that sets up our Nitro final. The Black Magic Glory T at 5.84 seconds. He'll be taking on Jared Caminito, ran a 5.86. That's it for Funny Cars. Here we go with the wheel standers. And this is the only father and son wheel standing team in drag racing. Jack and Toby Ermitrack. This is Toby Ermitrack, right? He's the night raider, 20 years old. There's his old man, Jack Ermitrack. He got the car they call Hemi Under Glass. Most of these cars powered by big block Chevrolet engines stuffed in the back seat. You can see the motor sitting there behind the driver. beats his old man on 986 150 miles per hour in the right hand lane the old man second best of 10 14 115 here comes diesel Lewis. Diesel Louis Force out of Yorba Linda, California, the sport's only wheel standing Kenworth body machine. It's the most unusual wheel stander ever seen in the sport of drag racing, so let me tell you. 1953 Kenworth body truck powered by a big block Chevrolet engine. It's all riding in the rear frame rails. Take a look at that machine. It's got the wild wing on the back, the stack sticking out the side. Louis Ford is a great showman of the sports only 1953 Kenwood Wheelstander. It's time for the jet funny cars. These are the most powerful vehicles in drag racing. Produce almost twice as much horsepower as a nitro funny car. They're thrust driven. They put in an exciting smoke and fire show behind the starting line. So here we go, it's Weedy Roaster Time at English Town. The jet-powered funny cars pulling their way towards the starting line. Right-hand lane, husband and wife team. The two kids of the crew chief, Alan, Ellen, Hannah, the Eastern Raider team. Very well, wild looking car that is. Here in the near lane, Nick Rosberg drives the throws, Firebird, Firebird. Former track record holder here at English Town in the near lane. We'd like to regain it. Fire Group Firebird takes that with a 620 elapsed time, 260.11 miles per hour. Al Hannon, Eastern Raider, was real close, but the Stroh's Firebird was the car to beat. Okay, now if you think jet cars are exciting, here comes a jet dragster. Now take a look at this car. It's the longest car in drag racing today, 30 feet long. It's called the Botan Express, and it's powered by not one, but two Westinghouse J34 jet engines. Twice the power, twice the speed. And this is an unreal car. Like I said, the biggest car in drag racing. Take a look at the size of that thing. 
30 feet long, two big powerful J34 jet engines sitting behind Steve Catugno, the driver. Now, Dick Gallardi built this car a few years ago, hired Catugno as the driver, and without a doubt it's proved to be one of the most popular exhibition vehicles in the sport of drag racing today. Now both of these engines produce 5,000 pounds of thrust, which translates into 10,000 horsepower. Each engine, so we're talking about a 20,000 horsepower machine here. The car weighs almost six tons, about 12,000 pounds, a very heavy car, and it takes a lot of power, which both of those engines produce, to move this car down the quarter mile. Now the fire show that this car puts out is unbelievable. What do you like best about funny cars? Uh, the noise. <laughs> I like the nitro. So they go really fast. Speed in the flames. Uh, they're just pretty wild there. Powered by 426 uh, Keith Blackmire. Pretty wild. How about you? You like funny cars? Noise. The flames. The noise. I like the excitement and the danger with the speed. Everything just in combination. The, uh, the power and the, the noise. It's all great. <laughs> see an unusual race. As you remember, John Force in the first round had a problem with his car. He didn't make a good pass and he's very disappointed. He's out here behind me ready to go for second round. He's out here on a consolation type run. He just wants to come out and show to these fans that he can run. His competition though is going to be a jet funny car. That is Dick Rossberg back there with the Stroh's Firebrute Firebird. Johnny Forrest backing up the casserole GTX. Jolly Rancher Candy Polaroid camera. Oldsmobile here in the right hand lane. He's going to be taking on the Jet Power funny car. If you can see, Forrest lining up for his dry burnout, so let's watch him. Now, here we go. Fired and running is the Jet Car. You don't see a nitro funny car in one lane and a jet funny car in the other way. Force just wanted to come back and show these people in the stands that he can run. He wants to lay down a good five second run. He's getting ready to line up against the jet funny car. Let's watch. As you saw, Rothberg and the Stroh's Firebrood Firebird just kind of fizzled out on the starting line. He had what they call a flame out, and his jet just couldn't keep up with John Forrest.
now Chucky Etchells, who owns the car in the right lane that Paul Smith is driving, is out here on the track acting as crew chief for Al Hoffman, the car that he's own car is going to be competed against. A little brotherly love here. These guys uh, really know each other well and they like to help each other out anytime they can. shaking the tires as they went by our camera position here about 100 foot out. They're really pounding the ground. It was real aggressive driving by both guys and managed to hold on to it. Fired smoke show. I'm running the engine. I'm doing all the quick stuff. 
up with the afterburner. They have an individual fuel control. They dump raw fuel in the afterburner without ignition. That makes all the smoke get sick. Then when that raw fuel is going in there, they flip another switch. And that turns on the ignition. That creates the fire. And by adjusting these two levers, they can adjust how much smoke, how much fire comes out, and also the pound these burner pops to you. They do that by putting the fuel on and then the ignition comes in and it's right through real fast. So here we go. Seventeen last time. Look at that speed, 264 miles per hour. You'll notice those two chrome things that are sitting on top of the engine look like fuel tanks. They are. What they are are packs for the dual parachutes it takes to stop this car after he makes a 250 mile an hour run down this quarter mile. Both of those parachutes are blown out of those tubes by shotgun shells that are activated by the driver inside the car. He presses a button when he wants to shoot to come out. Fires the shotgun shell, which pushes the shoot out. Look at that fire and smoke show there, huh? Unbelievable, the size of this thing. It's so big, it's so awesome, it's incredible. A lot of horsepower, but designed to do one thing, go from the start line to the finish line as fast as it possibly can. What a great run by the Botan Express. That thing was really burning as it came by here. Okay, here we go with the second round of the wheel stand battle. Again, we got the father and son team. Jack and Toby Ermitraff, the old man, Jack, in the left-hand lane, his 20-year-old son, Toby, here in the right. The Knight Raider taking on the Hemi Underglass. Behind me right now are the two low ET cars from the first round of qualifying. In the near lane, on the right side, the current world champion in alcohol funny car, Frank Ace Manzo from nearby Morganville, New Jersey. His house is only like five miles from Raceway Park. This is his local track. He has low ET at 6.43 seconds, odds on favorite to win this race here today. His competition out of Nashua, New Hampshire, the Bell Boy, Dickie and Chucky Bell from Nashua, New Hampshire with their Bell Boy Pontiac Trans Am. They have the second low ET at 6.48 eight seconds. So Manzo has a little bit of a performance advantage here, and he's ready to go into the funny car final here in front of his hometown crowd. First in the bleach box, in the left-hand lane, it's the Pontiac Firebird and Dick and Charlie Bell from Nashua, New Hampshire. The Bell Boys. Brother Dickie drives it, Brother Charlie tunes it. They're both pulling into the bleach box, ready for the burnouts. Here they come. Manzo ran a 6.43 elapsed time in the first round to become low ET qualifier for the alcohol funny cars. Dickie Bell, he was only 500s behind him at a 6.48. Here we go, the brand new Swoopy, Motorcraft, Mr. Gasket, TRW Hurst, Keystone Automotive, T-Bird, a Frank Ace Manzo, defending world champion. He's definitely the odds-on favorite here, running in front of his local crowd. Now Bell, he's the invader from New Hampshire. He's got a good, strong car, but the question is, can he keep up with the world champ? Now let's watch these cars in the dry burnout. Manzo's using the experimental lock-up clutch that all the Nitro Funny Cars are using. He's experimenting it with it with his alcohol funny car. The onboard computer tells him they have enough power to carry it. Hydraulic cylinder will engage the clutch that will lock it up tight. It gives them an extra speed, so to speak, in the transmission. Usually these cars run with a three-speed transmission that driver shifts twice. But this lock-up clutch that Manzo is experimenting with, getting ready for Indy next week, is a new trick setup. It's going to give him another gear. It's going to give him another gear to change. He's going to make three gear changes in less than six seconds. So here we go. World champ Frank Ace Manzo in the near lane. Dickie Bell, the Bell Boys, the Pontiac Firebird on the far side. Alcohol, funny car, final here at the K-Mart Polaroid. Here we go. Gold Pro, funny car, Two hundred 
217 miles per hour for Manzo. Bell, a better speed, 220 miles per hour, but only at 6.48 seconds. I think we're going to see a side-by-side -side smoker bird out here for this final round of Nitro 20 car action. of different track conditions and problems.
they may have won many times, but few, if any, can say they're comfortable running into the night. Under the glare of the lights, even the starting line procedures take on added stress. During the burnouts, the drivers do their best to rein in their hard charging machines. No racer wants to lose, but each time they advance, they know that conditions will have continued to change. They know that each challenge they met the last time will be back, along with many others. Fire and thunder, both on wheels and under the command of the driver. Even the darkness must give way when the jets ignite. Fire too blinding to look at. Burner pops so loud they can punch in a wall. Engine whine that makes you forget to breathe. Bathed in the light, smoke from the jets can turn back the darkness. Starting line at least, the night has met its match. 